Hello everyone, my name is Morteza and I'm a PhD candidate at Montana State University. I'm a member of Dr. Kahanda's lab and the topic of my presentation is Deep Semi-Supervised Ensemble Methods for Classifying Conventions of Human Proteins and Phenotypes. Proteins are the workhorses of human body and they perform a wide range of operations in cells. On the other hand, a clinical phenotype is the presentation of a disease in an individual. For example, if you have common cold, the phenotype for common cold can be running nose. In fact, thousands of proteins work together to provide the functionality of cells. However, when a gene is mutated, a malfunction of protein may occur that can lead to a genetic disorder. Variations of genes and proteins cause functional changes and finding the effects of their mutations is necessary for understanding the resulting phenotype. Many patients suffer from rare diseases caused by genomic variants and many of these variants are quite rare that makes the interpretations difficult. But one way to increase certainty is to identify patients who share the same phenotypes and have the same gene variants in common. Therefore, finding the relations between proteins and phenotypes can be considered very important for the downstream applications such as finding treatment and cure for rare diseases. Human Phenotype Ontology or HPO is a recently introduced ontology that describes phenotypic abnormalities observed in human diseases. It has directed a cyclic graph structure and more general terms appear at the top and more specific terms appear at the leaves. For each phenotype, we have an HPO term, an HPO ID, and we also have the relations between HPO terms. For example, no plasm is a phenotypic abnormality and also burst canceroma is a no plasm of the breast. HPO website provides the HPO annotations for human proteins. For each protein, we have a list of HPO terms associated with that protein. For example, BRCA1 is annotated with no plasm weight loss, and back pain in the HPO database. The problem is that only a small portion of human proteins have HPO annotation. Expanding knowledge bases such as the HPO database through biocuration is important for the future applications. However, biocuration that is generally done manually by the help of automated tools is considered time and resource consuming. So we need automated tools to do this for us. Researchers publish their findings from wet lab experiments in biomedical literature, and it is considered one of the most valuable resources for extracting information. There's a lot of information hidden in biomedical literature. For example, in the right figure, you can see a list of entities extracted from the unstructured text on the left. And we also have a lot of relations between these entities. Medline contains more than 26 million abstracts indexed, among which 950,000 were indexed in 2019. And you can see that the growth rate is exponential. That means it's almost infeasible to do this manually, even with the help of automated tools. Relation extraction from biomedical literature can be done by co-occurrence based methods that look for any convention of two entities of interest in a span of text. Or they can be done by the help of rule-based methods that define linguistic patterns and extract the relations using these patterns. Or they can be done by using machine learning-based methods. Machine learning-based methods can be uh, done by feature engineering, graph kernels, or they can be deep neural network uh, models. The two key steps involved in 
extracting the relations between proteins and phenotypes from biomedical literature are to extract all the protein phenotype conventions from biomedical literature and also to classify extracted conventions for finding the valid relations. In this figure, you can see a sentence that has a protein and phenotype. And this sentence conveys a relationship between this protein and this phenotype. However, in this second sentence that contains a protein and a phenotype, we don't see a relationship between these entities. So we call the first sentence a good convention and the second sentence as a bad convention. We previously implemented PPPRED, that is a supervised model for classifying the conventions of proteins into two classes of good and bad convention. We manually annotated 809 sentences and we use a list of features including bag of word features, engineered features by domain expertise and similar studies on the relation extraction problem, and also distantly supervised features that come from the unlabeled conventions and also the annotations available in the HBO database. At the end, we observed that the data set was underrepresentative of the problem. However, the distantly supervised features show positive impact on our results. We manually annotated a few more sentences and we created training, validation, and test sets. Training set has 1,010 sentences and validation and test sets have 337 sentences each. You can see the distribution of good and bad conventions in these sets. It's worth mentioning that obtaining the label data is time and resource consuming, and it's an expensive task. But in the PPPRED study, we observed that unlabeled data has positive impact on our results. So we want to take the advantage of unlabeled data. So we develop a semi-supervised model that takes the advantage of unlabeled data and uh, trains the supervised model on our small label data set and expand the training set and using a combination of CNNs and RNNs creates an ensemble model for making the final prediction. First, we start with extracting all the conventions from biomedical literature. So, as you can see, we start with 1.7 million full text articles and 27 million abstracts. And after tokenization, we uh, extract the phenotypes and proteins using NCBO annotator and link file. At the end, we have the conventions of proteins and phenotypes. In this table, you can see the statistics of the extracted conventions. We have around 700,000 sentence level conventions and we have more than 1.1 million uh, sentence level conventions, conventions of proteins and phenotypes from abstracts and, co and full text articles. Once we have the conventions extracted from biomedical literature, we start with the training set and we fine tune BERT on our small label data set. Next, we make predictions on the unlabeled conventions. And using the validation set and self training, we expand the training set. Using the expanded training set, we develop two models based on convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks. And by computing the average of these two models, we make the final prediction. This is the architecture of our convolutional neural network. It has two inputs, the original sentence and also the shortest dependency path between the protein and phenotype in the sentence. We fit these two into our uh, convolutional neural network and 
by using two window sizes of three and five, we uh, concatenate the results and using fully connected layers, we make the predictions. This is also the architecture of our recurrent neural network. Like the CNN, we have two inputs, the original sentence and the dependency paths between the protein and the phenotype, and also using bidirectional LSTM layer, we compute the sequences and by concatenating the return sequences, we use a fully connected layer on top of that and we make the final prediction. For our experimental results, we use PyTorch and we set the length of sequences to 80. We train 100 dimensional word to wake embeddings and uh, we train both CNN and RNN models for 20 epochs and we also fine tune BERT for 4 epochs. We use binary cross entropy loss and ADAM optimizer. Next, we compare our ensemble model with PPPRED that we previously implemented and also S3VM that is semi supervised using support vector machines. At the end, we report precision, recall, and F1 values. These two figures show the results of multiple executions using our ensemble model and either of RNN and CNN as the final module for making the predictions without an ensemble. As you can see on the left figure, our ensemble model provides better precision and recall values. And also in the right figure, we see that our ensemble model provides better F1 values while holding the better um, AUROC values. These are the results of compar comparing our ensemble model with recurrent neural network, convolutional neural network, and BER. As you can see, our ensemble model provides the best F1 value among these methods. This table also shows the comparison of our proposed ensemble model with a supervised model called PPPRED and a semi-supervised model based on support vector machines called S3VM. And our model significantly outperforms the other two models. In this work, we presented an ensemble model using RNNs and CNNs that are combined using averaging. We showed that our ensemble model outperforms a supervised model called PPPRED and also it significantly outperformed S3VM that is a semi-supervised model based on support vector machines. The findings and the insight of this work have implications for researchers, biocurators, and other developers in biotech mining uh, domain. We observe that the accuracy of name entity recognizer tools such as NCBU annotator and link pipe has direct effect on the quality of our model. So using any of our tools with higher quality and higher performance provides better results in our model. Our experiments are restricted because of the running time of BERT. And using lighter models is a potential future work in this study. We are in the process of implementing a web service that utilizes the proposed model and can return a list of most relevant sentences for an input pair. This is our team. At the end, I would like to thank the ISMB 2020 for providing the travel fellowship and also 
I would like to acknowledge Katrina Leon and Julia Shearer for annotating the second list of um, sentence level conventions for us. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.